In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, grant your people constancy in faith and hope, that we may never doubt the promises of which we have learned from you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, some Jews from Antioch and Iconium arrived and went over the crowds. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples gathered around him, he got up and entered the city. On the following day, he left with Barnabas for Derby. After they had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed presbyters for them in each church, and with prayer and fasting, commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Pisidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they gathered the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. Then they spent no little time with the disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your friends, friends make, make known, known, O Lord, the, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages and your dominion endures through all generations. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. May my mouth speak the praise of the Lord, and may all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away, and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. I will no longer speak much with you, for the ruler of the world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father. 
and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In our reading this morning from the Acts of the Apostles, that we are told it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Whether it is necessary or not, I really don't know. But if there is one thing of which I am absolutely certain is each and every one of us will know our share of hardships. Hardship is a part of discipleship, but it is not the only part of discipleship. There is also hope and there is also joy. If we never had a hardship, if we never went through a difficult time, if we never had a cross, if we never stumbled or fell, how would we ever know that we need the grace of God? If everything was always smooth sailing, if we always had everything we wanted, how could we deepen our relationship with God? I have come to believe that the hardships we will go through in this life are simply opportunities to grow in our faith and our dependence on God. Depending on God or prayer is not a crutch, it is a lifeline. We will all know many hardships throughout our lives, personal, employment, vocational, relational, we will know our share of hardships, but we must remember that our Lord and Savior also knew his share of hardships, but he persevered until the end. He did not give up. He did not give in. The hardships we experience, the crosses that we endure, they are not placed on our shoulders by an uncaring or unloving God. I think we have them in our lives simply as opportunities so that we can grow in our faith and dependence on God. We're not being punished. It is simply an invitation to grow in faith. In my own personal life and the hardships that I have endured, whether they were personal or vocational, the way I grew was when I simply came to the point that I threw my hands in the air and said, God, I cannot do this on my own. Whether it was the death of my mother or the sex scandal that broke five months after I got ordained, those kinds of hardships, both personal and vocational, simply brought me to my knees when I said, God, I cannot do this on my own. I need your help. I need your wisdom. I need your courage. I need your grace. That, for me, is how I grew in my relationship with God. Each and every one of you will have your own stories to tell about the hardships you have endured or the hardships you are currently going through. Don't look upon them as punishments. Don't look upon them as that somehow or other we have done something wrong and therefore we have to be brought to our knees. The hardships we endure, let us see as a gift from God, as an opportunity so that we can grow in our faith and dependence on Him and come to a better understanding of the human nature. Because I can guarantee you, whatever hardships we might be going through, other people are going through hardships too. Perseverance is such a huge part of discipleship. So when we are buckling under the weight of our hardships or stumbling under the weight of our crosses, let us remember the example of our Lord and Savior. And when he stumbled under the weight of the cross, he got back up and continued that journey, knowing full well at the end of the journey, he would be nailed to the very cross that he was carrying. Yes, hardships are a part of discipleship. They are, I think, a necessary part of growing in our faith and dependence on God. So whatever hardships we might be going through, let us look upon them as opportunities, opportunities to grow in our faith and dependence on God and opportunities to grow in our faith and dependence on each other.
With confidence, let us place our needs before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray this day for Pope Francis, Bishop John, all bishops, priests, religious and missionaries, and deacons, that they will be faithful in their service to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our government leaders will enact laws to help protect the most needy and vulnerable in our society, including the poor, the sick, the elderly, the immigrants, and the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or suffering with life-threatening, life-debilitating, chronic, or terminal illnesses, and for their families, that they be given the faith and the strength to endure. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the coronavirus pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our doctors, nurses, medical researchers, and first responders, in gratitude for all they do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those mourning the death of loved ones, that in their grief they will come to find peace and consolation and find their hope in the resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in the silence of our hearts, let us offer up our own petitions. For the petitions, prayers, and needs we hold deep within our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear the prayers of your family before you, those spoken and those which we hold in the silence of our hearts. If it be your will, grant answers to our petitions. Open our eyes and our hearts to see how we can help bring these petitions to fulfillment. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And together, let us pray the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, we ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless each of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.